Does stem cell therapy cure food intolerances, in particular gluten sensitivity? Okay, so we don't like to use the word cure because we don't know. You know, it might be because of or in spite of whatever we did, but uh, we have had cases of severe food insensitivity that have responded really well. Like Corey, that picture I showed you, he was really, you know, he was in the ulcerative stage, but I, I remember a guy who's, who's the, I, I guess I can't give any specifics, but anyways, he's a, he's a director for a multi-billion dollar foundation, and the, the guy who gave the money to the foundation said, I want you to go down there as a guinea pig, see if they kill you first, before I go down there. And so he had these amazing, uh, these incredible food intolerances. He could only eat three foods, and he was, he was super skinny. And he came down, and now, I mean, literally, he was treated once, and that was eight years ago, and I still talk to him every month, and he's off. I mean, he, he basically eats a normal diet. The biggest thing he wanted to do was get back to drinking beer. <laughs> and amazing. by the way, Corey said, make sure you tell everybody that, that I eat chicken wings, I eat pizza, and then what's the hot sauce he uses? He's, anyway, he uses some hot sauce that he said, you know, he, he, could, he, couldn't, he, could bear, he couldn't eat hardly anything when he had those. But, you know, so. Awesome. Okay, we have three more questions. This one is from Joe. Hey, Joe. I would imagine we have more than one Joe in the room, but if successful, are autoimmune disorders permanently cured, or do you need to keep getting treatments? Okay, well that's a big old question because there are a whole bunch of autoimmune diseases and they present a whole lot of different ways. Um, we've probably had the most experience with rheumatoid arthritis and multiple sclerosis. And I can say that rheumatoid arthritis, I just gave you an example of somebody and there are many examples where one treatment and they have a very long remission. And I, you know, I would say, people ask me, what would you, what would you like to treat? Well. I love, we love autism kids and families, but it is, it's three patients, you know what I mean? It's not one patient, you got three patients. And, and usually the kid's not real happy and all that sort of thing, so, I mean, there are challenges of treating patients with autism and we, we really enjoy it. And it probably brings us the most joy because you have somebody who maybe wasn't gonna get to a you know, certain level of, of accomplishment in their lives and, and you can change that trajectory a little bit um, but rheumatoid arthritis is like my favorite because almost everybody gets better and with one treatment they don't have to come back so uh, we've had some that have come back but I love that disease and then certain kinds of heart failure I mean winter winter chicken dinner you know one and done I love that stuff and that's that's you know makes you really happy um, and then, but going back to autoimmune diseases, there are, I know for Hashimoto's thyroiditis, we've had several cases that one treatment was enough. We have also had cases where three treatments isn't enough. So there's a, you know, a spectrum of the disease. And with, with multiple sclerosis, that is, that is one bit broad spectrum of the disease. You can have somebody that has one lesion and it comes and goes, or they have one lesion that g g comes, goes, and then it so pops up somewhere else, comes, goes, comes, goes and they've only had it, that's relapsing remitting, and they've only had it for a couple years, usually those people, the, the immune system is not that brittle, it's not, you know, and you can, you can get it over the hump. But you have somebody that's been fighting it for 12 years and they have, they have now permanent lesions that aren't coming and going, they have secondary progressive disease. And some of those people have to come back. You know, when I went to Panama this time, I, when I left Bahamas, I went to Panama again on Sunday, and then Monday morning, I walked in the clinic. There's a gal from here, and I was hoping she would come today. She's from Dallas somewhere. Um, and she's been coming there since 2010. I went up and said hey to her and got a big hug. And, and she said, she, so she's been coming since 2012, but she was wheelchair-bound in 2000, 2010, sorry. And she's probably been down there once every two years for the last, you know, six or seven trips. And she's just, thank you for keeping me out of a wheelchair, you know. I'm not perfect. I met somebody here. Sorry, I can't, rem can't remember her name. But a few minutes, a few minutes before I came in here, she said kind of a similar thing. She'd been down there three times um, the last six years. And, you know, she's, she, she looks completely normal. 
He said, I'm not completely normal, but it keeps me from declining. And so I think there's a big spectrum there in autoimmune diseases, but certainly rheumatoid arthritis is kind of the easier end of the spectrum. Amazing. Juan asked a question. Is Juan still here? Awesome. So if we have cord blood and cord tissue from the recipient already banked, can these cells be used to create a treatment? Well, the answer is yes, they theoretically could be. Uh, practically, though, it's very, uh, it's very in labor intensive, super expensive. You have problems with them releasing them. I don't know what, what bank you use, but most banks won't release those cells to anybody other than a transplant center. And there are only like a dozen transplant centers in the United States. We're not a transplant center, so to get them to release to us is, we, we actually did this early on. The first, first autism patient we ever treated, we had her cord blood, and they actually went to the place, got it, put it in a thing, and brought it down to us, and we treated them. We didn't expand. That was just the blood, not the, not the MSCs, because they didn't, back then, they didn't, nobody was storing the, the tissue, which they do now. So they came down with the umbilical cord blood. We treated her with the available umbilical cord blood, which is just, you know, this much, and it's gone. And then we grew up MSCs, and we treated her with both of those things. And, and I, I, here's my personal opinion. I wish I'd have banked my kids' tissue. I didn't, didn't know what I know now but when they were born. My youngest is 27, so just kind of getting into it. I wish I'd have done that. And I think there's value to that. Practically, clinically in Panama, we can't do it just because of the, this, the massive amount of inertia that has to be overcome. And just getting them released from the bank sometimes is problematic. I know that family cord blood in the, in the past, when people would ask me where to go, they'd say go to family cord blood because they will release your, your cells to a non-transplant center. So right now you have to go somewhere like Duke or MD Anderson or something like that because the majority of the, the cells that are actually used are used for bone marrow transplant if somebody has a real problem in life. Okay, well, if you have any further questions, as Dr. Neil mentioned, the staff is going to be outside. The doctors will be outside to answer your questions. If you would like to be evaluated for treatment, you can visit one of their websites, submit your application. It will be reviewed by their board of doctors and then their patient um, manager or how, how do you call it, your patient coordinator. Their yeah. patient coordinator will contact you. And Cindy Cunningham's here. She's the head of the patient coordinator. She's Look right for Cindy. There, She's Cindy. right there. <laughs> she, she, she can make sure you get, and ta get taken care of. And I encourage you upon your return home to take a look at the gift you received, Dr. Neal's book. It's a best-selling book, arguably the best educational tool on stem cell therapy. The language is super simple for us regular people to understand. It should, remain, should answer your remaining questions. And thank you all for coming. Thank you, Neil, for your thank time. You. Thank you, guys. Really appreciate it.